Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to Return at Future Farm. I'm getting ready to leave the house. I've got to go to my pastor's this morning and take him some plants. And I had plans for making a different video this morning, but I have a little child home feeling puny. Ezra is in here watching How Ridiculous, which is a really cute YouTube channel. What you say is... I'm tired. You're tired, not feeling great. So I just got done making him a tea that we make. Um, I like sharing stuff with you, like this with you guys because it's really easy. So if you go to the store and you buy like a box of medicinal like tummy time tea, you're paying like six dollars, maybe even more, you know, if you're buying like an organic tea for, I don't know, 10 tea bags or something like that. Whereas you can grow, this is peppermint that we saved. This is just dried peppermint leaves. Um, of course, you can buy this bulk as well pretty affordably. Um, this I purchased. This is ginger root. Uh, however, I would, I'm hoping to dry some this year. And then this is marshmallow root. Also purchased this. So I just keep these jars. They last a really long time. And I use a little tea infuser. And I don't really measure. I just put some of each of those things. Another really good one for upset tummy is fennel. And um, I just pour boiling water over that and then add honey to it. And it's really nice if somebody has, you know, gastrointestinal distress happening. So something that I say regularly that I didn't know wasn't common. Um, I've only ever lived in the South. So sometimes I'll say things and get a response from people. And that's when I learn like, oh, other people don't say that. Um, I'll say whenever we're feeling like poorly or if somebody's just a little under the weather, we say that they're puny. And every time I say that, I'll get a comment from people. And some people are like, why would you say that about your child? Why would you say that about yourself? I, I guess in some places that's like a, like an ugly thing to say. I don't know. Here in the South, that just means you're feeling a little sick. I think I just said it a minute ago that Ezra is puny uh this morning and that just means he's feeling a little sick he's got a little tummy bug <laughs> just drove down my driveway to my greenhouse because i'm headed out maya just picked up some concrete and unloaded it so, you're doing business with you. yep and over here Got a little renovating happening. So I'm having them pile the grass that they're taking up over here because I didn't know what y'all wanted to do with it as far as like maybe composting it or yeah, that's fine. Just getting rid of it, but that's good. Figure out what to do with it. Thank you. When we set up the pathway that leads into the greenhouse, I had this beautiful little picture in my mind of doing creeping thyme um, in between the flagstone. And so we made it uh, with sand and some barrier underneath and then put soil in between the stones and I planted creeping thyme, which was promptly completely destroyed by um, the Bermuda grass that was here because Bermuda grass is a zombie. And so we thought, well, that's fine. We'll just weed eat this and keep it down. And it's just grass in between the walkways or the path stones which would also have been fine, but I did not take into account the fact that we have this glass greenhouse right in the middle of this space and running a weed eater regularly around a glass greenhouse was risky. And so after the French door got busted, we replaced the glass with plexiglass and we decided to go ahead and redo this walkway with concrete. So. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> My jam. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I don't know much. Is that <laughs> you jamming? No, that's Michael Hall oh. jamming. Oh, that's <laughs> no. All right. So my friend Michael's here. We're gonna talk to him a little more later when I'm back and I have some more time. Mike and Jim did the flagstone under the pavilion. You guys have met them multiple times on videos. Uh, they do amazing work on stone. And also Michael and his wife Jess are some of our really close friends. I love when I can hire my friends to work in my garden because I love honoring people's work. This is something that like is, this is important to me. I'm just gonna give you this. This is 
take it or leave it. You know, maybe you could call it unsolicited life advice. You are on my channel, so I guess that is in some sense solicitation for my thoughts. <laughs> but um, my little brother's tattoo artist. He did my tattoos. And, you know, he told me pretty early on that if you want to hire a tattoo artist to do a tattoo, you should find an artist that specializes in the style of tattoo that you like. So my brother is like a traditional tattoo artist. And so people will come to him and be like, hey, I like watercolor tattoos. Well, he'll be like, I don't do watercolor tattoos. Now, with that being the case, I've really come to apply that to like anybody. I like to find people who are passionate about the work that they do and give them space to do the kind of work that they do and honor it. And so like with my friends here, they do this amazing stonework and they really love it. Um, and I think that whenever you hire people who love what they do to do what they do and you're not asking them to do something that they don't do, you end up with much better finished products because you're getting to have a piece of that person's passion. And like in this case, I love that my friends get to put their hands to my garden and it's what they're good at. And it makes my garden as a whole better because I have all of these different pieces of people's skill sets and their passions. And this, you know, the space is made for them to do what they do well. What's up, Sowards? What's up? What are you doing? Looking like the Secret Service with your sunglasses on? <laughs> <laughs> just running security keeping you keeping you safe oh is that what's happening yep. well, i'm just gonna grab these plants and take them to johnson's with me uh when i got out here this morning it was like 68 oh that's great so it worked great it is a hive of activity on our farm some mornings like this morning i came down wes is here i asked him to go look at bosco because bosco was laying down i think he was just cold he hopped up when wes came out there yeah. but the way he was laying, he just looked different than he normally does. And I will ruin an animal's nap if I think that there's something wrong. Yeah, I'll throw rocks at him if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> laying down. There's Bosco laying down. He looks comfortable. He doesn't look upset. But earlier, he kind of had his head tucked down. And it's just not like him, but he hopped up and ran when Wes came out there and yeah. then we'll let Wes rub on him. And I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong. All right, so I'm trying to make some tags really quick. I'm just taking some cabbages, cauliflower, um, and broccoli, and I'm trying to label them because we just label whole trays instead of individual plants, but whenever I give them to people, you know, we've got to make sure they know what they're getting. These are really great labels they are. I've got the brock, <laughs> the collie, I did write the whole word for cabbage. All right, I'm gonna take these. I'm gonna leave my camera here. I'll see you on a little bit. All right, it is now evening. Well, not evening, it's afternoon. You guys are gonna get to experience this in a cool way. They're gonna be like, man, they did that so fast and so effortlessly. <laughs> wow, I think they only took 20 minutes. <laughs> Look at this. I tell this. my wife all the time, don't watch those shows. <laughs> it doesn't happen in 30 minutes. Almost yeah. fell over. I'm trying to walk very carefully. I almost fell right into the bush. It's beautiful. That's the goal. Yeah. But this was all your rock. This was all the stuff that was already here. So you just moved things out of the way and more or less just put them back? Well, so we had to dig it all up, which... And then level it. But again, there were no lines when we dug it up this morning. It was yeah. grass, and you might see a rock. Yeah. And then a rock here, but we didn't know exactly where the lines were, so we pulled it up and tried to set it the way that it was, and now we're just trying to get back. It looks beautiful. I think that's, I, the only reason is because Wes is here. Probably. Wes makes everything better. He does. So what Michael was saying was today they were going to do this, and then let it set and then they come through and fill all the cracks in so everything's level and it'll all be in concrete hey guys look at this the first asparagus of the year is popping up right here i have thoroughly scoured the beds and that is the only one but if it's here that means there will be more soon y'all my friend michael ball who's laying this rock down will do this thing to you where he'll start singing a disney song a, a, like a very commonly known Disney song, one you've heard since you were a little child. And he'll start singing it just casually, not pointedly, casually, in your vicinity. 
so that it'll get stuck in your head. And that's just what happened. He just he just got me. Yeah, he'll just think. <laughs> he just got me. Can you feel the love tonight? That is. And I'm over here just singing along, you know, like not paying attention. Ten minutes later, punk. So I'm actually over here by my garden beds and there's a whole bunch of chamomile volunteering in the ground here. And I'm thinking I would like to try to dig it out and put it up into the garden bed because while some will probably pop up in the garden beds, this stuff is further along. Um, like that's a pretty good sized one. Here's another one. Here's another one under here. And I will have flowers sooner if I can let these grow. If I leave them here, they're just going to get weed whacked. This is the chamomile bed, and it's been so heavily mulched that things haven't really come back up yet. And I bet that being right by this bed, this has been just somewhat protected from the cold. Here's more. It's all over here. Last year, the guys came out and did the stone all underneath the pavilion. All this. And I was actually remembering, because it was about this time last year, and we were harvesting the first asparagus, and that's actually what made me go look and see that there was one tiny asparagus that was coming up. This year is the first year that we actually get to harvest like all the asparagus. I mean, for a while, you harvest as much as you want, and then when they start getting kind of spindly, after a while, you kind of have to let them start growing so that you don't like kill the plants by harvesting absolutely everything. But you're supposed to start them and you can start heavily harvesting after a couple years. So I'm really pumped uh, to see those coming up because that means that's about to be on the menu quite a lot because we're going to eat a lot of it while it's in season. That's something I love about seasonal eating is being able to eat something in such excess that you kind of get tired of it and then about the time that you're burning out on it, it's going away anyway. And then the next thing is coming in. Tomorrow I'm going to get out here. Bear! Bear! Oh, there you are. Tomorrow I'm going to get out here uh, early in the morning and bring some pruners and gloves and I'm going to prune my roses and fertilize them. Um, they're going to be finishing the concrete, but I won't be in their way. Today I really didn't work out here very much just because I had a bunch of, I had appointments and stuff in town and meetings, but I wanted to stay out of the way while they were having to like keep the greenhouse door shut. I've got the fans going really loud in there so it wouldn't get too hot. So Will actually did this today. This is a pretty big deal. It appears bear approves. Um, yeah, so check this out. So these are the uh, fish scale swells, um, horseshoe swells, basically they dip down and then kind of have a swell on the hill, goes down this hill. Basically these catch water. And this is where we are going to do blueberry plants and just berry plants. This was our original plan. I had reverted, I had changed. I was going to do the berries in the middle of the garden. And I may end up still putting something like that up in the middle of the garden, but I'm not going to do it this year because we're building our house this year and we actually have to take our septic line right through that space. So we are planting potatoes there again and leaving like a pretty wide space to be able to bring the septic line to and tie it off into the septic field, which is out in the pasture. And we were talking about berries and I really want to get these in because it's kind of like that asparagus. This is the third season for that asparagus and finally get to harvest a lot. And I really want to get the berries established as soon as possible, which means kind of establishing these spaces. So Will, Will and I talked, we came all the way down the driveway the other day and kind of talked about immediate plans as well as ideal plans, eventual plans. And I asked what he thought as far as the berries go. We kind of both agreed that putting them down here now would be better. And I still want to put some muscadine spaces up. And I still want to get blackberries and raspberries planted. So I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do. I'd also like to get a few more fig trees planted because I love figs so much. And this actually is completing my vision. So when we first moved here, I wanted to do the garden belt. I wanted it to run all the way down the side of the driveway, 
all the way down here, ending right here where we get to the low point where the water flows through. I won't plant anything down here because it stays relatively marshy. And this is gonna do that. So we've got all of the fish scale swales, and then we're gonna do some like longer rows here with the blackberries, raspberries, and that completes the garden belt. That means that our garden spans about 800 feet from start to finish, including the uh, orchard. These sheep are mowing like crazy. They're about to be loosed back up in that pasture. This was just temporary. They get moved to new grass twice a day because they're taking the grass down. Um, as you can see, they're hair sheep. Hey, bear, don't scare them. Be sweet to those mamas. These are hair sheep, so you don't shear them. Um, they, they blow their coats every year, and right now they're rubbing up against to this fence, which it seems to be helping their coats come out pretty quickly. Of course, we're giving them hay also. They get pretty good quality hay because the grass isn't growing enough for that to be sustaining them, especially in a pen this size. Um, but they're, they're fine. Somebody commented the other day about, you know, what a terrible way to keep sheep. One, this is not like the way that we're keeping our sheep all the time. Um, it's kind of a temporary thing because the pastures are so wet that one of our sheep got thrush in their foot. And so this was kind of a modification, something that we're doing for the time being to be able to keep them in dry spaces. And they're, they're, this isn't bad. Um, I, I wouldn't want to keep four sheep in a pen like this like indefinitely, though I'm sure you could, especially if you're moving them to new grass multiple times a day. Um, but they will be back... busted <laughs> they'll be back uh in a you know a, a sizely pasture here before too long are you sad mistreated sheep they're like i don't know it depends on if you let that dog keep messing with us bear be a sweet boy speaking of things people say there was some there was a question i was going to answer i believe that this was an earnest question um and so I wanted to answer it with an earnest answer and just like honestly answer it. I had a commenter the other day, and I think this would be a great time to talk about this considering we're, we're working the stone path down. I had a commenter say something along the lines of, a friend of mine was over the other day, we were discussing you and your channel, and my friend said, at this point, you're spending so much money to grow food that it would be a lot cheaper for you to just go buy your food at the grocery store. And today, as I show you guys, that we are reworking this path. Um, obviously, having the stone path down in concrete instead of grass growing up between it, having a stone path at all is completely unnecessary to grow food. I think Fern might be way too nosy for me to leave you guys sitting on this fence post. All right, we're going to log down to the pond um, so I can address this question and give you a, a solid answer without being harassed by pesky cows. So we actually, the topic of money comes up like a lot now that we have some. And I'm going to speak really frankly, and I'm sorry if I, I say things that aren't like necessarily the right thing to say. Just, I'm going to be honest. Um, about seven years ago, I was probably about right now sitting in my basement trying to figure out how to make my, I don't know, $40 seed budget that I had for my birthday money that I all saved up uh, work to be able to grow a garden. I mean, I was digging cinder blocks out of the rubbish pile in our yard to be able to build garden beds and digging soil up from the one part of property on the back corner that actually had any soil and carrying it in five gallon buckets up to fill the cinder block garden beds. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. I guess, no, that was probably more like 10 years ago. Either way, it wasn't that long ago that we were scraping out this lifestyle from next to nothing and when I talk to you guys about humble beginnings I know that when we turn the camera on to this life and this farm and this beauty and what I've heard called excess um I know it feels like it's just impossible or or excessive there's this weird balance that we're in of trying 
to stay in a place of transparency and authenticity. That's like extremely important to me. It's instru- it's extremely important to me that my friends who I actually like live life with can attest to the fact that like when they watch their video the videos that we put out that they're seeing the same person that they see day to day. They're seeing the same lifestyle that they see day to day on the inside and when people meet us it's really important to me it's one of the greatest compliments that I ever get whenever people meet us that they go you know I wasn't sure if you were going to be the same but you are like that's a huge compliment to me the problem a lot of times with being authentic is that it comes at the cost of being relatable um so when I'm showing you guys my beautiful gardens and all of these different things I understand for a lot of people it feels like, oh, well, that's excessive and you're not even saving money on growing food. And and you're right, like stone paths and pavilions and greenhouses that look like an art project and things like that, that's not saving me money to grow food. Now, you don't have to have that stuff to grow food. And in a lot of the things that we're doing, it is money saving. I mean, for instance, like making worm compost teas, that's very money saving uh, in order to feed your garden and keep your soil healthy. Um, A lot of the things that we're doing, I think like the, the fish scale swells, I mean, that's solid information. And, you know, as we develop these things, a lot of the things we're experimenting, we're kind of figuring out how we're not necessarily teaching this is what you should do because we're just trying it out for the first time, but we're sharing the journey. And there can be value in that. So I'm not saying that our gardening approach as a whole is excessive. I mean, there are definitely some really great things in that that can be scaled and applied. But yeah, I mean, most people are not going to build a garden just like this, just for the sake of growing food. Now, what you are seeing here is, yes, it's my gardening budget, it is my food budget, but it is also my hobby budget. It's also what I buy. I mean, I don't have... I don't have like a fancy shoe habit or a designer handbag habit or, you know, like really much fancy habits at all outside the garden. I mean, this is, this is my passion. This is my hobby. This is what I want to spend my money on. Whenever I get gifts for Mother's Day and my birthday, I get things for my garden. And there is one aspect too that I think has to be kept in mind. And it is weird. I mean, talking about this is weird. I feel a little uncomfortable even right now, but I'm okay being an open book too. And if somebody earnestly asks me a question like that, this is the answer. I mean, it's not a simple black and white answer. And if I won the lottery tomorrow, so where we are right now, I'm definitely not scrounging my $40 seed budget for my birthday money to try to buy seeds. You know, obviously you see some, some extravagance. I don't even like to use the word excess, but like you see abundance. And that's true. I have a lot of seeds. <laughs> Which actually is a very, very specific detail that just totally woos my heart and puts me in a place of incredible gratitude because it is so specifically like, hey, I see you and know you and and want to to blow your mind in the place that you used to feel such great desire. But we, we still are, in a lot of ways, just living very normal lives. Like I have a, a grocery budget and we, you know, we have to, you know, balance the bank statement. And I mean, I'm I don't get to just go swipe my debit card and buy whatever I want all the time. I'm like, we have a budget. Like, yes, we are not in the place that we used to be, but we're still living in a lot of ways, just very normally. But I can honestly say, and I think this is important, if I like won the lottery tomorrow, if I hit it big, if I, you know, if I had $50 million hit my bank account tomorrow, heck, if I had a million dollars hit my bank account tomorrow, yeah, I'd do the same thing. I'd have the same garden as I have right now. The house we're about to build, it's, it's my dream home. It's no mansion. It's a farmhouse, you know, like, and it'll be really cool. It'll be very specific to us. I would build the exact same house. If I had just all the money in the world, that's what I would do. Um, we'd do it the same way. I mean, we're going to be doing a whole lot of the work ourselves. And I would do that too, because we want to. And I think there's something really impactful in realizing like what you are seeing here what maybe doesn't make sense well that doesn't make sense that's not saving money in the grocery store this is quite literally exactly how I want to live like this is my dream life and while if there was a lot more resources some things may happen faster like 
I would have built my house three years ago instead of waiting until now. My business is downtown. I, really, honestly, the thing that would be really different if I had all the resources available to me is a lot of the community outreach efforts that I'm doing would happen faster. That's one of the things that we're really stuck in a holding pattern on right now, just slowed down by the availability of resources and time. But for the most part, I mean, it would be exactly the same. And that's really cool. Like, And while that may not be relatable, I totally get that. Like when people are like, I can't watch you anymore. You're just not relatable. I bless you. Like, I hope you find what you're looking for. There are a lot of people out there making content. And I'm sure there's somebody that is going to really just hit the nail on the head for you and feel really good to watch. And I hope you find it. But I can't choose relatability at the expense of being authentic. And this is real life. This is really how I garden because I want to. We really do grow a ton of our food. We eat it. We love it. I I can say I feel like it's kind of comparing apples to oranges. I mean, like, yes, it would be cheaper in some ways to go buy food from the store rather than eating this food, but I don't think that it would be better. And there are definitely some things that over time, once the initial investment of the infrastructure is, I mean, we'll be saving a lot of money. I mean, we figured it out and even like with with a dairy cow, it's not cheap to own a dairy cow. And really, if you want cheap, yeah, just buying some milk at the store is probably cheaper. However, if you're going to have a dairy cow utilize everything that they produce, replace as many products as you can from the store, it can equalize out, especially if you're comparing to like products, like if you're comparing to non-GMO, organically raised, pastured milk. I mean, that is expensive. And so essentially we're choosing to do the work ourselves rather than pay somebody else to do the work to create an equal product. But comparing that to like the conventional milk at the store, sure, the conventional milk is cheaper than our milk, but it's also not as good. And it's the same thing with like the vegetables. Our soil is so healthy from the work that we're doing and we're putting all of this work in. And I don't, yes, I could save money going buying food from the grocery store, but not only are we having a product that is significantly more nourishing being grown in healthy soil? We also have access to it no matter what. Like if the prices at the store went through the roof, this is gonna stay the same and the initial investment will have been made. So there is a resilience to it. So there's value in that. And so I think that a lot of times people come and look at it from a sense that's not really looking at the whole picture. I mean, if you zoom into a micro aspect on anything, you could probably make a solid argument that it's not worth doing. Um, But this is totally worth doing to me. And here's the thing, like this is my dream life. That's ultimately why we're doing this. I mean, I love the resilience. I love what it produces. I love the life. But ultimately, the way we are doing it is being determined by the deepest desires of our heart. So while, yeah, if you're looking at it from the aspect of like, are you even saving any money? Um, I mean, also, YouTube's my job. Like, I make money showing this stuff. So I understand that's not going to be everybody's situation. Again, relatability versus authenticity. For a lot of people, it doesn't make any sense to spend this much energy on your food growing but in a world where you turn on the tv and it's a bunch of garbage there's a lot of value in doing it this way and being able to share it with you so those are kind of some thoughts on it i hope that doesn't come off defensive i really don't feel defensive about this it is weird to have your finances discussed openly and publicly like there's a bunch of videos like random people make videos it's like how much money does roots and refuge make like That is so weird to me, probably because I've just never had any money in my life. And so like the fact that people are putting energy into like making content about my finances and people are sitting around with their friends and discussing it, it's frankly just a little bizarre. And I don't, I, again, I don't mean that with any condemnation. I'm just telling you from this end, I'm like, wow, really? That's the conversation you had? But I mean, I guess I've discussed weird things with my friends before. I don't know. Mostly we just punk each other by getting songs stuck in each other's heads. Anyway, those are my thoughts on that. I don't talk about it a lot. Usually whenever people kind of bring up the financial sense of my farm. I don't get into great topics about that. I know there are a lot of people who like share their budgets and share their goals and share all those different things and figure out like per pound how much things are costing. I feel like it would be maybe a little misleading for me to do that because I I am monetizing my farm. Like I am making money by showing. I give away 
a lot of what I produce because I already made money off of it by making videos of it. So that's kind of how I do it. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I bless you until next time.